Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the question I most often get asked in my videos is, what mods are you using to make Skyrim look so good? Indeed, in virtually every Elder Scrolls V video I post, I'll end up receiving a good 5 to 10 versions of this inquiry. So I figured it's high time that I finally get around to addressing it. Now, you may have noticed in the past I've made similar videos, where I gave in-depth explanations of my Skyrim graphical mods. But all of that content is now woefully outdated, and over the past 6 or 7 months, I've adopted an almost entirely different setup. One you guys seem to have noticed, and thankfully liked for the better. In fact, one of the reasons I've put off on making this video for so long, is I wasn't sure when or if I'd be making any big changes to my mod list. However, I think I've settled down for now, and I'm pretty excited to share everything with you. It should be pointed out that I very much consider my Skyrim graphics mod choices with a no compromises sort of attitude. I'm trying to create the absolute best looking game possible, period. Performance hasn't been a big issue for me, I'm running a 2080 Ti i7 build so experiences in that department may vary, but file sizes can add up so keep an eye out for that. I've decided to organize the mods that we're going to cover today into six different categories major texture packs, important individual textures, clutter enhancements, vegetation, lighting and ENBs, this is a big one, and lastly, miscellaneous mods. So hopefully that'll keep this video organized and on a nice pace, despite all the mods we're going to be discussing. Anyway, without further ado, let's do further. Beginning with major texture improvements, I'd like to use Skyrim Realistic Overhaul as a base. It's a massive series of texture packs hosted on ModDB that covers just about everything from roads to city walls. It's hard to find a texture that SRO doesn't improve radically. And that's what's really great about it. We're just using this as a base. We're going to be replacing a lot of what SRO does. In fact, most of it. But there's just so many retextures within this mod that it manages to cover certain parts of the game that nothing else ever thought to touch. Falmer huts, mead containers, the stuff that other mods leave behind is what makes Skyrim Realistic Overhaul a great base to start off with. Next, I'd like to throw on Noble Skyrim. Noble Skyrim is another texture pack that focuses on architecture. Homes, cabins, log houses, that sort of thing. The resolutions are obviously far superior to vanilla, but the author has also crafted his own aesthetic, making use of darker colors to give a more dramatic, yet somehow realistic vibe that I prefer to vanilla. Then for landscapes, my go-to is Skyrim 3D Landscapes. This is going to get your dirt, sand, snow, coastlines, all those natural ground textures, and enhance them in resolutions as high as 4K. On top of that, 3D Landscapes goes a step further than just painting over existing textures. It also peppers the land with various 3D objects, like pebbles, new types of vegetation, and even some debris, to give the ground that three-dimensional look. It doesn't cover all the landscapes in the game, I'd say it improves about 80-90% to 90 of them, but the rest is exactly why we're also using Skyrim Realistic Overhaul. While we're talking about 3D landscapes, I'd also recommend you pick up 3D Rocks by the same mod author. It replaces all of Skyrim's small and medium-sized rocks and rock piles with incredibly detailed new meshes and accompanying textures. I mean, just look at this. These are some freaking incredible stones. It's one thing to improve the texture quality, but to go in and refine the geometric models, that's something I absolutely love. Our final mod in this category is Enhanced Textures Detail UV Tweaks. This mod doesn't actually retexture anything by itself. Instead, what it does is edit the UV mapping of a variety of objects and models to allow them to use a larger area of whatever textures are loaded onto them. If that didn't make a lot of sense to you, don't worry, you're not alone, I still don't quite understand it. In English, essentially what ETD is doing is making the textures on certain objects almost smaller in size but not resolution, and repeating them to improve their visual fidelity. It just makes things look better, particularly with models and meshes that already had poor UV maps to begin with. Best of all, since it's not retexturing anything of its own, Enhanced Textures Detail works with modded textures too, so you don't have to worry about it overriding anything or being overridden by something else. So despite being hard for me to both understand and explain, Enhanced Textures Detail has become an absolute must-have for me. Now we move on to our next category in this video, Important Individual Textures. 
These are all still just more texture mods, but they don't retexture quite as many things as the entire packs we just covered. Instead, the creations here focus on retexturing a single type of asset or two, but do it so well, I consider them must-haves. Starting off for the bigger boulders and cliff sides, Red Rocks 4K gets the job done in a stunning fashion. It does break away from the vanilla style we see, trading in darker gray colors for brighter reds and yellows, but it's a change I've come to really appreciate. And when you combine Red Rocks with Enhanced Textures Detail, you get something that is truly brilliant. For water, I just keep coming back to Realistic Water 2, using the watercolor preset. Realistic Water 2, or RWT, is an oldie, first releasing back in 2013 for Legendary Edition, but I still consider it to be the best at what it does. I specifically enable the watercolor preset to get a brighter, much more vibrant palette, and I think it fits in really well with the lighting mods and ENBs I run, which we'll get into shortly, don't worry. However, the mod also comes with a default, more realistic setting if that's what you're trying to capture. Since RWT's release, there's been a number of similarly great water mods out there with just as high texture quality. So if you pick any of the other ones, don't worry, it'll still look great. And lastly in this category, for all things Northern Tundra, I use Fluffy Snow and Just Ice. Technically, these are two separate mods, but they go together extremely well and supplement Skyrim's colder regions. Fluffy Snow is rather self-explanatory, offering 2k textures to make Skyrim's snow blankets appear less smooth and more fluffy. Just Ice improves glaciers, ice sheets, and all things frozen H2O, giving them a more crystallized look that blends great with realistic water too. Here we enter our third category, Vegetation Mods. At first, I was somewhat unsure if I wanted to dedicate an entire subcategory just for plant stuff, but frankly, there's so many mods I use for this, plus we're so often exposed to the game's fauna, I think it's necessary. When it comes to grass, there's an endless variety of options to pick from, but I've settled on Vadosprum. I think I said that properly. Releasing in mid-2017, it's on the newer side of things, and replaces Skyrim's boring, sparse vanilla fauna with gorgeous 2K textures, and increases the amount of ground covered by grass quite a bit. The plant life you'll see will vary from environment to environment, with each one carrying a different look and feel. The forests of Falkreath will be blanketed with rich, dark green colors, whereas the plains of Whiterun feature a habitat more ripe with yellows and light browns. Again, much like water, there's a wealth of grass mods to choose from, many equally good with just as high quality textures. Some honorable mentions in my opinion would be Verdant or Skyrim Flora Overhaul, but Vedosprum just satisfies my preference the most. Next for trees, Skyrim 3D Trees replaces both the models and textures of over 220 trees and plants to transform Skyrim's selection of timber into something that satisfies next-gen standards. Remember that, improving both the models and textures. Not only will trees now look better, but they'll also have improved responses to wind thanks to weighted foliage. And while we're at it, let's not forget HD Photorealistic Ivy. Normally I wouldn't go out of my way to mention a mod this small. All it does is change the textures and meshes of ivy plants. But it does it so well, and ivy's such a common piece of vegetation, I think that this deserves some recognition. It looks so real you can almost feel the photosynthesis. That doesn't make any sense, why'd you put that in the script, Nate? Moving on to clutter mods, these are the types of modules that improve the smaller, more miscellaneous things in game. Particularly in relation to furniture and small objects. Tables, silverware, beds, candles, that sort of stuff. I think a lot of people underestimate just how important it is to make sure your clutter looks as good as everything else. Because if you're rocking 4K textures all around, but your sweet rolls are still looking like something out of Fallout 3, it's gonna create an odd sort of atmosphere. The Static Mesh Improvement mod is a great way to kick off this category. A classic you'll no doubt see in just about any mod enthusiast's load order, it overhauls the appearance of countless static 3D models. Its focus isn't on retexturing, but instead improving the polygon meshes of about 900 different individual items. You'll notice in the base game, so many object models look 2D in a way, or not quite as three-dimensional as they should, if you know what I mean. Smim strives to solve that problem and create far more realistic looking surfaces for those models. After the SMIM comes Ruins Clutter Improved, which improves both the meshes and textures of many of the smaller things we find in Dungeons and Ruins. 
So not only do we get better shapes, but coats of paint are in even higher resolutions as well. Get ready for your ruins to be dotted with gorgeous looking urns, sarcophaguses, and torches. On top of the other two mods, I also can't recommend enough the High Poly Project. This, in effect, does the same thing as the Static Mesh Improvement mod. But, for the objects it affects, it creates even higher quality polygon meshes that make for some truly next-gen looking items. I mean, just take a glance at this sweet roll and tell me you don't feel immersed. The only catch is that the HPP doesn't address nearly as many items as SMIM. But, since we're putting this one on top, we end up with the best of both worlds anyway. Alright, now we get into my choices for lighting and ENBs. This is undeniably the most important group of mods you want to pay attention to when building your Skyrim load order, at least in terms of visuals. We've already gone over some amazing retextures and model replacers, but without an up-to-date lighting engine, our game is still going to look very weird to say the least. Skyrim's vanilla lighting systems weren't exactly made with 4K resolutions in mind, so we're going to have to use some that were. By contrast, if you find the right ENB and lighting mods, you can make your game look pretty damn good without any retextures at all, so definitely do not overlook this section. It will make or break. We'll begin this part with Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel. Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel, or NAT for short, is actually first and foremost a weather mod. So it updates the climate with new types of weathers, improves the particle effects of participation like rain and snow, enhances clouds and all that stuff, but it also modifies the color and lighting patterns of all existing weather types, as well as introduces some new shaders and subsurface scattering techniques to make everything feel much more naturally lit. At least when you're outside. Sunny days will feel more vibrant and brighter, while foggy ones will be darker and contain more grays. The mod looks great by itself, but when combined with the ENB I'm using, everything gets even better. That ENB is Natural View Tamriel by Fireman F. I've chosen this ENB in particular because I love the way it lightens colors without going too far and oversaturating them. It additionally has a custom preset specifically designed to complement my weather mod, Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel. They go together to create a feeling that's bright and warm without being too unrealistic or drifting too far away from what I would consider the vanilla feeling to be. Outdoor environments look absolutely breathtaking, especially on those cloudless blue sky days. However, I will admit that interiors do at times feel a bit too dark when using NVT. For that reason, I like to turn my gamma down to 0.9 when inside of buildings and dungeons, just to even everything out. Sometimes I also like to tweak my exposure down to 0.15 rather than 0.2 as well. And those are just minor changes, mainly so I can get the best shots possible when recording. In normal gameplay, chances are none of this will be a problem at all. So Natural View Tamriel and Natural Atmospheric Tamriel combined together are what I would personally consider to be the best weather and lighting combination currently available. Though I think the rest of the jury is still out on that one. The last lighting mod to discuss is another one of those that you'll see shown off in just about every experienced modding enthusiast's load order. The Enhanced Lights and FX mod. What this mod does is edit a variety of the game's static light sources, such as candles, lanterns, fireplaces, and torches, and changes the type and patterns of light they emit to behave more realistically. You'll see improvements in reflections, darker interiors, and a generally more dramatic feel when this mod is enabled. It doesn't conflict with NAT or NVT, so you don't need to compromise on anything with ELFX. Furthermore, it shouldn't have any impact at all on performance, since it's really just playing around with vanilla assets. Suffice to say, this is a classic mod I don't think my list would be complete without. And now we get into our last category of this video, Miscellaneous. All the mods I think are important to share, though didn't really fit in with any of the other five classifications. To start, there's Windsong Immersive Characters Overhaul. This will polish the textures of all of the game's human and mer NPCs, as well as Argonians, Orcs, and Khajiits. It's one of the few mods of its kind that's able to noticeably enhance the look of characters without turning them into straight-up models and cover girls, which is what earns it a spot in my setup. Furthermore, how could I leave out Enhanced Night Sky? 
As the name implies, Enhanced Night Sky will turn your twilight into a stunning display of extremely high-resolution stars, auroras, and nebulas. With some assets in as high as 8K texture resolution, gazing off at the cosmos has never been so satisfying in Skyrim. And finally, the last mod on this list is Footprints. Footprints is pretty self-explanatory. It will allow your character to leave footprints after you've walked in snow or ash. Don't worry, it's compatible no matter what texture mod you're using, and almost always looks great. Frankly, I'm not quite sure what goes into making this mod function the way it does. It's clearly not a texture mod, but it also doesn't seem to be doing anything with models. I don't know. I guess some things just work. And with that out of the way, we are finally done. Just looking at the script, I can already tell this video is going to be on the longer side of things. But whether you're trying to emulate my setup, get a few suggestions, or just be entertained, hopefully it helped. Now, admittedly, altogether I have around 200 visual mods active at any given time. But the overwhelming majority of those are really tiny things. Like, I have a mod that retextures a single circlet you get from a quest to 4K. That kind of thing. And if I included all those small ones, well, we'd be here for a while. Longer than we already have been. However, I really don't think they're necessary, and they fluctuate quite often anyway. The mods shown off today are all the ones that actually matter, and I think really count. Though, if you do have any questions left, feel free to pop in my Discord, and we'll do our best to help you out where we can. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, everybody. What are your thoughts on this load order so far? Do you have any suggestions, places I could maybe improve? Leave a comment down below. I'm always looking to enhance it. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.